members of the church. Why do members of the church love MLMs? Why do they get so involved with them? And ultimately, are MLMs good or are they not so good? So that is our topic of discussion today. If you have any thoughts, good or bad, perspective, whatever, about MLMs, if you've been in one, if you've been a victim to them, <laughs> um, whatever it is, then feel free to drop a comment. Um, in fact, I just received an MLM uh, message just about two days ago, so I'm particularly fired up on this one, but um, Jaden, I'm going to throw it over to you. MLMs, yes. go ahead. Yeah, so I have actually started my career in sales, in multi-level marketing, direct sales, network marketing, whatever you want to call it. So I personally am for network marketing, and we can kind of get into like why I am and the perspectives I have, because there are some caveats. Like I have seen it done the right way. I have seen it done the wrong way, and I definitely have my opinion of how I'd go about it if I was to do it. Um, but moving forward, I personally wouldn't be a part of an MLM. Like if I got invited by someone into the future or something like that, the reason being is I make way more money than I ever could by myself than doing MLM. And that's the only reason that I wouldn't do MLM. So that's kind of like my stance for today's chat. But like, where do you guys stand? Like, what do you think? You know, for me, I just, I think it's, someone really likes doing MLMs. They really like inviting people over to their house and talking about a business and sharing products from that business and recruiting them to also do business. If they enjoy doing that, then more power to them. I just, if it's not illegal, then it's perfectly fine. That's, that's what I think in my book. I just think like for me, I don't care enough to do MLMs. I don't really like um, recruiting family members and friends to sell products for me, which maybe is a bad quality. Maybe I should enjoy doing that. Maybe that's actually what I need to do so that I grow my business better. Who knows? You know, so like, I think that it has a really negative stigma um, for some good reasons and also for some not so great reasons. For me, I've just kind of landed. I'm like, I don't really care if someone wants to do it they can go sell in an MLM if they think it provides good income for them and it's a good lifestyle for them, then do it. That's where I'm at. So to frame my position on it, uh, you called it, Jaden, direct sales. Uh -huh. Why do you call it that? Why did I call it that? Yeah. Um, just because some like specific companies, and I, I guess it differs from company to company, but sometimes company will call it direct sales. Another company will call it network marketing. Another one will say, hey, we're MLM, multi-level marketing, and they don't care. So I think the reason I said that is to just like encompass the whole industry because that's like typically like what I hear people talking about. Does that kind of clarify though? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, and I have been hearing frequently um, that this is kind of like the new term for MLMs. And what's interesting, uh, you didn't say this, but I've heard this from other people, is that MLM has such a negative connotation to it that now they're calling it direct marketing uh, because if you pitch it as this is an MLM, People are so turned off. And here's why I, I actually hate MLMs um, is because I feel that they're very predatory, honestly. Um, I think that they target specifically, for the most part, stay-at-home moms. And they specifically feed on stay-at-home moms who are members of the church who they're like, hey, so you're staying home. Do you wish that you could contribute more to your household? And, you know, like, and I'll, a lot of this, I'm kind of gleaning from the uh, documentary, the Lula Rich documentary, which just like 
Oh my gosh. I was so fired up about that. It made me so mad. Um, but unfortunately, in my experience, that's a lot of how I've been introduced into that whole world is, um, you know, the message you get, you know, someone's name pops up, you haven't spoken to them in years. And it starts out, oh, hey, how's it going? It's been a long time. Um, you know, I was just thinking about you and you think you're having this like, oh, wow, here's someone I used to connect with or be friends with. Um, and then, you know, three seconds into the conversation. So I'm selling this product. Do you want to buy from me? And there is no connection there. It is just, I have selected you because you're someone in my network. Your name is in my friends list. So I've been told to send everyone a message because the more messages I send, the more likely it is that I'll get buys. And that's just the whole structure. And I just take so much issue with that as a business owner who really, really has built a business on deep personal connections. So do you have an issue with the MLM or do you have an issue with their sales process? Uh, both. So let me, let me define that, right? Like an MLM is multi-level marketing, right? So like, <laughs> it's this idea that there's like totem pole, you know, like the lower you are on the totem pole, the less money you make. But as you go up, more people work for you, make more money. So there's people I know personally in my circles that are stay at home moms that are making 70 grand a month in an MLM that's pretty awesome. You know, like the fact that there is that opportunity that someone could make that kind of money, that is a stay at home mom. There's really not so many just available options that just present themselves to you like that. Like you can create that option if you want, you can make that if you want, but someone coming to your door and inviting you to it, that's a, that doesn't show up as much for stay at home moms. So to me, that the thought of an MLM, I don't know. It's I don't think it's don't that think terrible. It's that the structure, how like, how like as you go as up in the organization, you make more, and also, hopefully, it's selling enough product to support that. That's that's where I would have an issue. Is like, is it actually a good product that someone's mm -hmm. selling? Because if it's a good product, then it doesn't matter to me. I think people should sell things that help other people, and it's a lot easier to sell a good product. To me, I think what you're saying is more of the sales process, the actual like recruiting and the type of marketing and sales that they do, because if they had better sales training, they'd probably make more money and probably wouldn't offend a lot of people. So to me, it's more of a leadership and training issue than it is the actual structure. I don't know if, if you agree with that. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. Yeah, I that that is a hundred percent my standpoint too. Because from my experience, like the reason why I got away from MLM is because I realized, or network marketing, direct sales, is I realized that you had to become a certain type of person to be able to do it successfully. And the fact of the matter is, is not everybody is going to become that person. So here are my caveats, and hopefully, live like this, like can create a barrier of connection between us or like a connect, a connecting point. Um, but like my caveats, number one is like, you should be aware of your sales process and your marketing process. For me, when I did MLM, one thing that was unique is I knew how to do Facebook ads. So I didn't like go, like, of course I went through my list of a hundred friends, like they always tell you. And so I did that first, but then I like a week later, I'm out of people to bug. Right. So I'm like, what do I do now? I went and did Facebook ads and that's what kept me going and, and had a lot of success. The problem is for me is like, number one is there has to be transparency in an integrity in how you communicate and like what you actually teach. Right. So in terms of um, like recruiting and like finding people to work on this MLM with you or in this opportunity, I think it's really important to let them know what exactly it's going to take for them to make the income that we promise or that we show. Or of course you can't guarantee, but if you're teaching that, you want to make sure that they know the realistic expectations. So that was the first thing for me where I was like, okay, I can make more money on my own rather than trying to train a hundred people to be just like me. It's going to take way longer to just 
teach everybody rather than just do it on my own. So that's the first caveat. The second caveat is actually like having a product and service and focusing 100% on that rather than the recruiting side. So of course, like that's a big part of the business and what can keep it going. But in like what it really should be focused on is like, hey, we already have a product and service that's a great product and service. We plug you in as a distributor and you should be able to find people that want this product and service. So because of those two caveats, I haven't found any MLMs that I would join moving into the future. But this is why I still recommend that people be open to it or even like I wouldn't look at you if you even did it. It started my journey and my career for where I am now. And a lot of the stuff I learned and had to go through to grow and be where I'm at now, like I'm grateful for and I probably wouldn't have changed that. And a lot of people that I work with now started in network marketing and MLM had the same like realizations and now they've moved on as well. Yeah. So what, like where there's a huge disconnect for me from like everything that you guys are saying is um, that if there's a good product, then, you know, like maybe it's just the, the process that's messed up, but in an MLM, the person is always the product, right? It's, it's almost never selling products. It's always selling people to sell products for you. And that's like the whole scheme of it is that it's, it's and that's why uh, the LuLaRoe leggings ultimately blew up is because they stopped selling leggings and they were just selling each other to build their downline so that they could make more money. And the care, the quality, the actual product itself, it just was kind of one of those, well, as long as we have one, then we're not a Ponzi scheme, but a Ponzi scheme is illegal for a reason, right? And, and this is like an MLM is, basically one step removed from a Ponzi scheme. And I have yet to see any MLMs that I've been pitched to that have been, that I've investigated, that I've looked into anything that I genuinely am like, you know what, that there is a really good quality product that improves my life. It's always like, oh, here's like kind of a, a garbage product that people are selling each other on. And that's the game is just how many people can you sell? And I, I just inherently don't like that. Yeah, I think there's something to appreciate yeah, about that though, because, it's, because it's, it's like, it's, if you're training someone in sales, if you're actually going through sales training, if you can sell someone in an MLM, you can sell them to anything, you know? Like, and I think that's kind of what Jaden realized, right? It's like, it's way more yeah. work to do that. Yeah. It's a lot more difficult, but it's, it's been a, a benefit for your life having done it, right? And I think of my first sales job, first I was selling job, Cutco selling knives. Cut knives. And, oh, yeah. and by the way, by the excellent way, product, 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 very good very product, good product. But, but it's not it's technically not an MLM, even though if I if raised I up the raised ranks, up the I'd be ranks, collecting a percentage of more people. If I raised more, click more percentage, all that kind of stuff. The difference is, that you get raised up in the ranks based on your sales performance, not based on who you recruit. Right. And so right. that that is a big difference between an MLM and a regular sales structure like that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's important to understand. Like Olivia is saying, right? Like, so in, in what you're saying, Olivia, yeah, I don't agree. Like that's not a business model that I like because they are selling product through selling the idea of selling product. That makes sense. It's like, right. you can make so much money selling this product. And as you, as you recruit more people, then you'll make more money and all that. And the product they end up selling is through the recruiting process because someone needs to buy the product in order to be a salesman because it's all contracted out positions, right? They're not actually employees. They're all independent contractors. So then they are selling the idea of selling, which then they have to buy the product in order to sell. So that's how a lot of times these companies actually sell product. Um, I think there are some companies that have done a good job at selling their product, uh, not just people. And I think one good example in Utah is doTERRA. There are a lot of people that buy doTERRA, even though they're not 
going to sell doTERRA. That makes sense. Regardless of what you think about doTERRA's product, people find value in the product and they actually buy the product. And which I think shows that doTERRA is probably one of the businesses that's a little more ethical, a little more thought out, methodical than let's say essential living. I mean, so, oops, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I shouldn't say that out loud, let's slip. So anyway, that's something to take into account. I do think product matters. And one good metric, if you're looking at joining an MLM, ask yourself, do people buy this product outside of the recruiting process? And mm -hmm. if they buy this product outside of the recruiting process, then you probably have a good product to sell. That's something that people will buy. The other question is, do you like selling people on selling product? If you like doing that, then maybe an MLM is a good fit for you. Because even though it's a one step close to a Ponzi scheme, it's not a Ponzi scheme and it's totally illegal. And so you can make money doing it. So why wouldn't you, if that's something you like? So, I mean, my thing is that I think that that principle of, um, you know, can you sell people um, and, and going back to um, Jade and what you said about, well, if I can, if I can sell pyramid scheme, I can sell anything, right? Um, and I think that that's inherently what makes people distrustful of honest salespeople and of buying services, which is so, so important to talk about right now, because like we're living in a society that buys services, right? So everything is about what, what makes me feel good. And so that's, that's the currency right now. The currency is relationships. The currency is service. Um, and because people are getting trained with the growth and the expansion of these MLMs, then they're getting trained. How do I sell people versus if you're selling a service that actually, or a product that actually genuinely helps other people and improves their lives, then you're not selling people, you're selling yourself. And I think that's the biggest difference between like a, a kind of like gross salesperson versus someone that you actually want to buy from is do they sell me on them? Do they sell me on you're actually helping improve my life? I actually see something better for myself having interacted with you versus I feel like I'm I almost have to protect myself against this person because all I am to them is like dollar signs. So why yeah. couldn't that happen in an MLM? I well that because I think that the structure inherently teaches against that. I don't think the structure teaches against that. I mean a structure can't teach. A structure is an inanimate object. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think and to I clarify think here too, too, like I, I agree a hundred percent with you, Liv. Like that's why I don't do it anymore. Like a big reason is because the leaders and a few well, I had some incredible leaders, like loved the people that I worked with there. Um, but they just they didn't know how to sell like you were talking about. And so as I started, because I saw that like whatever you know we're doing, we're doing it, it works for a short, short amount of time, but a, not, a lot of people can't duplicate it. And like you said, the market is getting smart. Like the market is seeing people dropping into your DMs or PMs and they like, they have that fight or flight where they want to take off or they want to be combative with you. So MLMs, I love MLMs now because it allows me to have a huge network of people that I can coach in my sales company. So now everybody's learning these bad sales tactics that cause people to fight or to flight and like not engage that's my entire like sales program now as i help individuals learn how to sell based off of this credibility authority and actually having a relationship like you talked about so that's why the love is not necessarily because like how they teach it with mlm mlm is great because it's creating a huge opportunity for me to like take these people who are taught the wrong way and say okay this is like the few nuggets and pieces that were good let's show you how to like sell in a way that is integrity based and you can have and be excited about the service and product. 
I think that unfortunately, just because of duplication, that's the big key here is like the reason why is that like we can't teach people or MLMs struggle to teach people how to really how sell and get sell really together sales, sales is because it's because based, it's based on, on what duplicates, duplicates not, is not is what is, is the most integrity based, based, what's going to build the most relationships and what's going to be the best way to sell. They don't ask that question. They ask, what can I teach to someone tomorrow that they can actually go out and do and duplicate so that I don't have to keep selling. And that's the part that I couldn't get behind because it's like, I'm not going to teach you some um, like stupid way to sell or market is going to bring you like one to five percent conversion. Instead, I want to show you how to close, you know, eighty percent of your leads and have like a long term pipeline of sales. So that's like the big shift for me. But I do want to like change the discussion a little bit to be a little bit more helpful with like members. Why do you guys think that members are so involved in it and so good at it? Then, like, okay, we kind of have figured out how we feel about it, whether it's right or bad. I kind of feel like there can be a right way of going about it if you're integrity based, but why do you guys think that members actually like flock to MLMs? Well, um, so first I just want to point out really quick, um, not to be that person, but uh, in your response, I think you just illustrated that structures do teach right? Because you said that you were taught incorrectly through your structure and now you're teaching something better, right? So I, I mean, structures are, are um, like tra brain training, right? Um, and so that's, that's where I think the big issue is. And I think that because of that reason, um, this is why members fall into it because um, members are inherently more trusting. They're inherently um, good natured. And so I don't think that people go into MLMs because they're malicious. I don't think that people sell MLMs because they're greedy. I think that people get caught up in the, the deceit of MLMs because they want to you know, have a hobby, they want to make some money, they want to uh, have an identity. I, I think especially this is true for um, like stay at home moms within the church who get involved in MLMs um, is that they are like, my whole life is kind of my kids. And that's like, there's, there's a lot of good in that. And you're still an individual, right? You still have to have an identity outside of your kids. And I think that's where moms kind of get pulled into it is because they're like, well, what, what is my identity outside of my kids? And so they get caught up in this. And I think that it's, um, it really preys on that desire to, to start exploring like, well, you know, who am I still as a person in addition to being a mom? And so then people are like, oh, well, here, you can be this sales rep for me and you can make all of this money and blah, blah, blah. And the reality, I actually was just talking to um, someone the other day who was a very, very successful um, MLM person. Um, she was very high up in her company. She did very well for herself. And she was talking about how um, it's, it, it's so much work to get to that point. And honestly, the majority of people who get recruited into it, they, they kind of get tricked into buying all of this product. And then they're like, well, okay, well, what do I, what do I do with this now? I've, I've got to get rid of it. I can't afford this. So let me see who else I can get to, to have it and take it off my plate because you know, now I've told my husband, I want to explore this thing, but now I'm stuck with this huge cost. And, you know, so I've got to make it worth it. So this doesn't turn into something so that I can prove that I add to our household income or like, whatever, like, there's a lot, obviously there. Um, and I, I just don't see MLM businesses as really, like, supporting a healthy relationship between husband and wife, between, you know, adding to income together, between 
creating more freedom to spend time with your kids. Like I just see it as counter to all of that wrapped up in a cute little deceptive bow. Yeah, I think that could be true. I think it also could be the opposite because I've seen both. I honestly, I've seen both. I've seen relationships get better and I've seen them get worse. And blaming it on an MLM, I think is a little bit too much credit to MLM. I think like in the end, people make their own choices to join an MLM or buy their product or be part of it. And they make their own choices in their own marriage. They make their own choices in their own health and their own life and all that kind of stuff. So it's the most valuable thing to learn really, even before considering an MLM is who you are as a person, what do you like to do? What do you stand for? Because then you'll be approached with an opportunity like that. And maybe you like doing that. Maybe you don't. Maybe it does fit in with your family life. Maybe it does fit in with your family values. Maybe it doesn't, you know, like, with structures struct so if you're talking about leadership structures then there are people in leadership positions that are teaching right if you're talking a structure as in like an actual structure that has no people but like just as a hierarchy right or how the structure is built then people create their own real rules in order to succeed in the structure yeah so in that sense you could say a structure teaches but they create their own rules in their mind of how to do it based on how other people do it and I'll tell one story that's kind of creepy. <laughs> so, so my <laughs> wife and I, a few years ago, we, we got to a point in our lives, which probably some of you can relate to this, which by the way, if you feel this way at all, please join Creo. It's going to be in the comments. We, we said, okay, we're starting to accumulate some money in our savings. We didn't make that much money, but I was really good at accumulating money. And I was like, I want to invest it in something, but I don't know what to do exactly. And I felt, I was like, we got to do something. Maybe it's real estate, maybe it's something else. And as we're thinking about it, uh, we met these people at a park and they're like, oh, you want to get into business? We get into business. We do business stuff. And they're kind of cryptic about it. They wouldn't like tell us much about it at all. And they said, we'll tell you more if if we have time to come to your house. So they're like so they even more cryptic. So they said, first read this book. And they gave me a book on like multi-level marketing. It was written by like Robert Kiyosaki. So I read that and I was like, this sounds like an MLM. <laughs> so they're like, well, I told them I read the book. Then they talked to us about it. And I was like, no, not my cup of tea. I don't really want to do this. I don't like this kind of stuff. And so they went away. And then again, I go to a park again and someone else is just wandering the park and they're doing the same thing for the same company. I'm like, are people just sitting at these parks recruiting young families? Like what is going on? So things, things like this, yeah, I disagree with. I'm like, that you can do it. Feel free to do it. There's nothing illegal about it. I don't know. Maybe someone might think you're a pedophile. I have no idea. But like you understand that this is not good marketing and not good sales people will be turned off by doing that so for me with mlms the reason why getting back to your question jay members why do members get brought into it i think a lot of what olivia said is true and also return missionaries naturally have been trained at talking to people even people that hate them I don't know if any of you have ever served in Eastern Europe and know what it's like to be chased out of an apartment building. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to work with people that talk to people that literally try and harm you, right? Like, so going to Utah and being in an MLM actually sounds pretty cushy compared to being a missionary in Eastern Europe and teaching people that hate you <laughs> to be honest, to be very honest and upfront about it. So I think for return missionaries, um, whether it's MLM or something similar like network marketing, I think it's a pretty easy transition to go from what they were doing into something else. Although there is kind of an ickiness factor of like, I used to do this for God. Now I'm doing it for money. 
right and so i think too like going back to the question of like why are so many members you know a part of this yo it could go to the fact like Liv was saying is like they're actually targeted right like within the company i was in I wouldn't go after single moms or in like target or, or even moms in general. Like I was typically looking for guys that were similar to me. Um, so that could be a potential piece. But the other piece is number one is I think the structure of the church is very similar to how you structure an MLM, right? So like we have a very easy understanding of how to like MLM works because our church is structured the exact same way. So if you know how the church is structured, then you can duplicate that in MLM and see how to like make everything run smoothly. The other part is like, like Ken said, most LDS individuals are return missionaries and they're great at marketing, they're great at sales. And we also have that belief, like we're, a lot of us are part of, you know, the tribe of Ephraim, where we're meant to gather people. That's like a skill set we're very good at. And I believe that's like a spiritual skill set of mine is recruiting, gathering people, training people, leading training people, people, speaking. Leading people speaking. And so I think that's exactly. like why that's I think like LDS members are so involved in network marketing, marketing and MLM, MLM is because it plays because to their strengths. Strength. But, but another community where you see MLM really MLM popular is like Hispanic communities, Hispanic communities, like South America South communities. communities. I think it's similar reasons. Like they have, like such, they a have such a good sense, sense of family that it spreads really fast with networking. And same thing with LDS members. We have a lot of kids typically, and so it spreads really fast. So I think that's like why MLMs and like members typically like go hand in hand. Um. Okay, I'm gonna say something spicy. Ready? Um. I actually think that the aspects of the church that uh reflect or are similar to how MLMs are structured are actually what I don't like about the organization of the church, because um, I think that, again, the process of selling people is inherently wrong versus, so this is like, you know, when you go out and, um, and I was not a missionary, but I did work in conservative politics in DC. So uh, there's, there's some similarities there. And it's like, like when you're trying to tell people here, this is how you need to be, um, then I think that that's a really different message than I love the gospel. I feel light. I feel peace. I feel joy. I feel blessed. And if you want that, I'll show you how, which is very, very different from you need to be blessed. You need to be saved. You need to have the gospel or else. And I feel like that's the difference in how sales, you know, like any business that has sales or so any business versus the MLM structure. I feel like that's the difference too, is either I'm going to put this on you, otherwise intended consequences, or here's this amazing thing that I have found for myself. It brings me so much peace and success and joy and love and, and whatever. I can share it with you right? Like, do, does that distinction make sense to you guys? So one thing you're not bringing up as well is where MLMs were born out of, the origin of MLMs, and the popularity, at least, of MLMs came out of Utah. So yeah. what, what you're mentioning, right, you're talking about the church and specifically missionary work. I don't think the structure of the church reflects an MLM, because there's not actually, like, a you get elevated in you the church with the more people you recruit in. Just to be clear, mm -hmm. people just to be clear, don't know the church. Yeah, yeah. That's not the structure That's of the church. That doesn't happen. So what you're talking about is more of the processes. And sometimes these processes are completely cultural. I worked in the missionary department for 10 years. So I helped train these missionaries on how to preach the gospel, on how to do it. And one of the big things that's being pushed right now specifically by Elder Uthdorf, is being normal and natural in conversation. in conversation. And so, and so if you are getting messages, messages from the Quorum of the Twelve saying, the stop doing, doing this, but it continues this, doing, it continues I would be careful to say that it is the church's, church's process, process rather than a cultural than a process. Cultural process. Mm -hmm. And the cultural and process, the however, was born out of the idea that the church was the one true way and the only way to salvation. And that message was being pushed all around the world which I think was a problem. 
And so that, that was something, you know, developed a little more at church headquarters than it was just culturally, but it stuck around culturally. So really what is going on, right? Like MLMs, what, what, what was first, the chicken or the egg, right? Is the question, right? Is MLMs the problem or is it something deeper? That's an issue because it's not just in the MLM, it's probably in other aspects of people's lives in doing these same kind of things on telling people how they should live their lives. Now, what would make someone insecure enough to tell people how they should live their lives would only be because they're worried about how they live their lives and they're not confident in their own process of living. So out of these ideas and these insecurities are born things like MLMs because they can use that <laughs> to influence people to join a cause and a movement, which will then help their life feel more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So recently I've been in some missionary discussions with, with, so I still do missionary work, right? I still do it, but I don't push missionary work on people at all. And even I've had people say like, yeah, I'm going to go to church when it feels right to me. And I say, good, do it when it feels right. And sometimes my bishop will be there when I say that. And he'll be like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah just go to church when you want to go to church. Is it that hard to spell it out? Right? It's like, <laughs> don't go to church because you have to, or you should. Don't go to Relief Society because you have to or you should. Don't go to Elders Quorum because you have to or you should. Go because you want to. And if you don't want to, then figure out if that's a problem. And if it is a problem, then figure out how to want to go. And so that's, for me, I respect people's agency now, right? And I think it's the same in sales, right? It's like a good salesman is going to listen to the other person and figure out exactly what they want and then frame the offer around what they want rather than telling them what they should want and framing the offer around what they should want. Maybe Jaden, you can spell a little more about this. Yeah, no, exactly. No, exactly. Like I think the big like, shift I the big and I think shift, the, the I think thing that hopefully you guys are seeing as well as I am is like the common ground here is how do you sell like how and that's, sell, the right? and that's the problem that i think we're problem. having here and so for me like my principle of sales is number one like my first rule is release attachment from the outcome so when i am having a sales conversation i don't care if they do it or not genuinely like i don't care if they decide to do it or not and what that allows me to do naturally is it brings more curiosity people like lean in more because I've released and I don't feel like, oh, you have to do this. You, what can we do to get you in this car today? So that's the first thing for me is like, you release the attachment. And then number two, like Kenny was mentioning is this ecological aspect where it's like, what's actually best for them, right? So I think that's where I have a problem with MLM and why I wouldn't do I, MLM I, in the future is the transparency future. isn't the transparency there. And then number there. two, there and isn't that two, ecological sales, that sales process. Sales and if there process. was, then I probably feel a lot different about that. About that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And, and um, I think it's safe to say that there's nuance in everything, right? Not everyone who participates in MLMs are bad. Um, and there are good people who, who sell it and who do really well. And that's great, right? Um, and Kenny, I do appreciate you clarifying that around the structure versus the process, um, because I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that, um, that I take issue with the, the general process that is MLMs and it obviously is something that goes a lot deeper. And so, you know, for anyone who is participating in this, anyone who's listening, if you're in an MLM, if you've considered it, if you hate them, whatever, um, I think that it's like this whole conversation for you is just to give you a chance to take a step back and ask yourself, is this what I want? Is this the process that resonates with me? And, you know, am I, am I wanting something more for myself? And 
I think this is the only way because I, I do think it's kind of framed like that sometimes um, versus, you know, like, um, like something that, that I think Kenny said earlier is that um, stay at home moms don't have these like opportunities that come to them very often. Um, and I don't, I don't really agree with that. I think that so many opportunities exist for everyone all the time. And so it's just a matter of, you know, like, do you feel the confidence to go out and build something and, and to sell in a way that's really connected that really resonates with people. Um, and that's all that I essentially want to bring awareness to here. Yeah, let me, yeah. let me clarify <laughs> one thing. I mentioned that the opportunities don't come knocking at the door as much as like an MLM offer compared to creating your own opportunity. So I think any single mom or moms or stay at home moms, you can make your own opportunities. There's plenty out there. You don't have to do it once. <laughs> That's just to clarify. And Absolutely. I wanna put a plug in for Jaden. Jaden is running a sales program right now that teaches people high leverage sales skills so that if you're someone that wants to immediately start making six figures, one of the best ways to do it is through sales. Jaden's throwing a program together. He's already got people in it that are paying him and they're learning and they're starting to make a lot more money. Definitely someone you want to add on Instagram and you want to check out. Yes, and, and thank you to everybody that attended this live and is watching the replay. Um, we just want to once again point out why why do we even have these conversations about what we don't talk about? It's because it's these topics that can be somewhat uncomfortable where we find growth, right? By Liv challenging me and me challenging Liv and Kenny and vice versa. What that does is that allows us to see perspectives we've never considered before. And oftentimes it's in those areas that we haven't yet considered where our answer is going to lie. So thank you guys for joining this live. Is there anything else that you guys would leave with them before we end today's session? Well, I want them to put in the comments their own opinion about Yes. Because I know that we just voiced a few opinions and there's probably <laughs> multifaceted opinions. Put them in the comments. Yeah, yeah. whether you're whether for you're it, for against it, it, or you're kind of like Kenny and you're like, either way, like, I'm cool. I, we want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of course, we're not here to tell you how to live. We're not here to make up your mind for you. We're here to challenge your current thought process, your current beliefs, so that you can come to a sense of what's right to you and what feels best to you and how to genuinely build a life that you're really excited about. Um, this is the point of Creo, which we've mentioned a few times. It is our online free Facebook group where we hold these discussions. We engage with you guys about, you know, what are you not thinking about? What are you afraid to question what are you not exploring out of doubt or fear or whatever. Um, and really, we just want to help you bring you to the greatest success that you can find. Um, specifically, our group is for LDS members who want to become millionaires. Um, that's kind of the, the container, the vibe that we have in there. So if you're interested in that, um, the link is in my bio you can go head over to Facebook and ask to join. And uh, just want to echo thank you to all of you for coming here, for showing up, for watching, and for being part of the discussion with us. Have a great week, guys. Talk to you all later.